Hi folks, in this video I want to do a bit of work on this car presser for the TGB moped. It's not seen any action for about six to seven years. Well, it's probably even longer than that because it wasn't run when I got it. So let's have a look and see what I'm going to be doing to this. I'll see you in a minute. Right, well, this carb, as I say, at a stage now where I've got all the engine back together now and I need to get the ancillary bits working. If it's going to ever run or start for us to test it, we've got to make sure the carb's going to be okay. I don't know what condition this is in. I've never had it apart. I've never done any work on it at all. So what I'm going to have to do is to strip it all down, clean the jets out. I'm going to put it in the ultrasonic cleaner. I've actually got it on over there, switching on over there at the moment. So let's start stripping this down. But uh, first of all, you can probably see I've got my new Versi tray here, which I got from Electrostatic Magic. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description below where you can uh, purchase these trays. Ideal for working on carbs. And if you hang about till the end of the video, I'm going to be giving five of them away. These are brand new, in the packages, absolutely fantastic things for working on carbs, or even other stuff as well. You don't have to use, just use them for doing this. This is what I find them useful for. So stick around to the end of the video. Somewhere towards the end, I'll be telling you how you can actually win one of these five, which I've got to give away for free. So that's coming up. Right, so let's start uh, stripping this thing down. Right, well, I don't know whether you're probably aware or not, but uh, most Japanese bikes are put together with JIS screws, not Phillips screws. I just use the term Phillips screws all the time, but um, I've got a set, but I've actually just bought this brand new set because uh, one of mine actually broke, and it's the most popular size one, so I've just got myself a new set from Sealy. So let me just take these apart first of all, and I'll get the ones that I need. Yeah, if you use a, a normal Phillips screwdriver on JOS screw heads, you'll find they chew up, and that was a common thing in the 70s and 80s when I was growing up, because we didn't really know about it then. So, right, let's, so let's start stripping this down. Again, I've not had nothing apart on this, so first thing to take off, obviously, is going to be the float bowl. There we go. Good thing about this tray as well is that uh, you can actually segment all the bits and keep them in their little respective orders which I find very handy. And I've actually tested this with brake cleaner and carb spray. And this seems to be made out of a silicone material, this tray, and it's, it seems to be impervious to any of them. So you ain't got to worry about damaging it by squirting it with uh, them chemicals. Right, okay, so let's just give that a slight little tap now. There we go. Now I don't know what it's like. And look at that, look. Now, a lot of people say that uh, you leave a carb full of fuel and all that. That's, that's not bad at all, is it? So I'm really happy with that. So let's put that to one side over there. And there's a little pin in there, which uh, obviously comes out only one way. Now you've got to be careful here. You don't knock or break off these little pillars there because easily done to break them off. So just be very careful if you're going to apply any pressure at all. There we go. Just got it. That just cracked that joint there. This is your worst part, as I say, for getting these out, because they can get stuck in. So let's put that in there. We can then lift the float out. And underneath the float, you've got the needle jet, which is, comes where the fuel enters the carburetor. They, again, this one, I don't know whether you can see or not, but it's got a little Teflon end on it, which means that it's going into a brass insert. If you've got one of these little needle jets, which has got a brass end on it, there will be a little rubber ring inside there, so be careful when you're clearing your jets out. This one's got the Teflon in, so I know that's got a brass seat. So let me put that to one side as well now. And already you can see the beauty of this Versa tray, because I've got things all nice and separated, which is very handy. So I'll just take this rubber clip off for this boot first of all. You get some of these carbs, they've got restrictors in them, so uh, this one hasn't. So just to be aware of that. And these rubbers can go rock hard, and in fact, these ones have. So just, again, just be aware of that. That they may split or crack on you. And you may have to prise them off a little bit. So just be, be aware of that. But don't be careful not to damage anything. If this does break, then I'll have to get another one, obviously. But normally, if you just run the screwdriver around it, you can break the seal and they'll loosen off. Now I can feel that's broken that seal already. There we go. And there's normally a lip 
so just be aware there we go see that that little ridge there that can hold these tough rubbers on so that's okay i didn't damage that right we've also got the automatic choke there that again needs to come off and again use the right size screwdriver you notice i'm changing screwdrivers now and this is like a plunger which when you apply a voltage to this this thing actually moves in and out and takes the choke on and off and that's what the uh, automatic choke is right so we've got the main jet here which i can actually see through and there's also a little pilot jet in there as well by the looks of it so what i'm going to do is to take these out take the main jet out first now again this because we've put a, a larger cc barrel kit on this we may have to play about with the main jet settings so i'm just going to put the original one back in for the moment when i do clean this off because uh, we don't know exactly what we're going to have to upgrade so that's the main jet out and you've got the emulsion tube which sits in there as well so if i push that through well i'll just push that emulsion tube through and as you can see it coming out now look there it goes and in that as well you've got minute holes around that as well you need to make sure that they're all clear so let's put that in with the uh jets that's the uh tick over screw again just to give us a benchmark i'll wind it in and count the turns half one one and a half two two and a half three so it's three turns out so i now know that the ticker just give me a base idea of where it needs to be so that's three turns out let's wind that white out again that's just a little plunger and we've also got the mixture screw there which i'm gonna check that as well so we'll go half one one and a half one and a half they're normally one and a half to two so that's one and a half turns out or in right out from being fully in and that's the mixture screw again we don't know whether people have been playing about with it so there's our baseline settings there we go there should be a little spring in there as well so just be careful of that there we go so that's the little spring sits on there so that's one and a half turns out and the other one's free okay we have got another little jet in there like a, a prime a secondary jet or something i don't know exactly what that one is but we're going to take that out provided i can find a screwdriver small enough there we go tip that out there we go another little jet and yet again tiny little holes in there so that's another one to be cleaned so that looks pretty good in that base there so i'm real happy with that and the actual main jet as well i haven't got a gasket set for this so i've got the original gasket on there which i'm actually going to leave on there it is a fiber gasket and uh it looks to be in very good condition so we'll just have to play this one by ear right so let's drop this now in the ultrasonic cleaner with this and i'm going to put the other jets in there as well let me get a little plastic cup because i like to just drop all these little bits in a little plastic cup together all the jets and other little ancillaries not the float don't need to put the float in there so just the little jets like that i've just thrown in there like that and coming over here to me ultrasonic cleaner the water's up to 58 degrees and i just like to get a bit of the old uh, cleaning fluid which all i've got in here is hot water and a few drops of uh, thinners i like to use the thinners in there because um it cuts through the any lacquer buildup which is on the carb sort of thing so that's what i like to use you can use what you like so then i'll just drop the other parts of the carb in there there we go make sure it's all covered which it is and all i'll do is switch that on for i will put that on for half an hour but my timer has gone up to swanee for some reason it won't go more than five minutes so just press the on button oh that's so that's gone wrong at all there we go so we'll put that on it will go on for half an hour put the lid on and leave that to its own devices it's a bit noisy that is but uh, i'll leave that on for the moment what i've also done is i've got me powder coating stuff uh in a little mobile trolley now let me show you that so i've got one of these little mobile wheeling trolleys here now 
and I've got all the powder coating stuff all in here, all, all in the drawers and all that, all the different powders and all that, so that's ideal now, I'm really happy with that, just makes life a lot easier, I can move that about a lot more now, look, so I'm afraid it's a bit of a bomb site in here at the moment, we've got so much on, let's get that rubbish bin out of the way, because I need to powder coat my um, kickstart lever now, so I'm going to have to move my old engine in the way, I've got to start work on this pretty soon as well, as you know, the uh, Reliant Regal engine. Just want to get the TGB working first, get that out of the way. Because I'm a little bit busy with all the work I'm doing around the house as well at the moment. We're refurbishing the bathroom upstairs, as you well know. And we're having the new ceiling. Well, we just had the ceiling done. Let me show you this little clip. We just had the ceiling done upstairs as well, so I've got to wait for that to dry. Let's have a little quick look upstairs then. The plasters have just finished the ceiling. No, I've just done this. I've been busy. Hey? I've been busy again. I've You've had been busy. So we just had the ceiling final skim now, as you can see. Looking all good. All the old signs of the old lights are now disappeared. And uh, that's all ready for painting in a couple of days' time with uh, a 50 fit 50 mix just coming into the bathroom as well, as you can see. Very all, good, isn't it? all that. So come out of the way, dogs. Not dog, dogs. dogs. Come, dogs. <laughs> come out of the way, Barney. I'm in. Mean. Unbelievable. Got that all sorted now. All that uh, old ventilation. I was gone now. All that's been levelled up up there, and that allows me now to finish that coving off when I finish putting this wall in, and then just slotting yeah. that coving in like that. So that's the ventilation hole up there. Yeah. So that's it. Happy days. Another step nearer. Right. Let's go downstairs. Right, so I've just got some black gloss powder coat here in my Easy Coat uh, gun. I've cleaned it off with acetone and I've also put the blow lamp on it because it's made out of cast to get any moisture and impurities out. So let me just give this a coating. Spin it round. There we go. That's as simple as it is, folks. And all you're looking for is a uniform coating all the way around. You don't get any runs with this sort of stuff. What you see is the powder adhering to the, that electrostatically. And that's ready now to go into the oven. So as you've seen me do on many occasions, I'll put this in the oven now. It goes in as a, a dry powder, like that. Just put that over there like that, hook that over there like that. Now as you can just see there, I'll mark that getting it in. I'll just put a little mark on that getting it in the oven. So all I'll do, just go over the bottom there where I'll, like that and it's done. There you are, back, back to normal. So I've just recovered that again and you wouldn't even know. That's how forgiving this stuff is. Oh, I've got it stuck so I left that bling lever too long look so let me just cut that off like that that's why because I left that too long so back over to the oven that's better just hang that in the middle and that is now ready and that's going to be cooked now for when I see it start to go a bit shiny I'll then start counting the timer down 10 minutes and that'll be in there at 180 degrees centigrade for 10 minutes when it starts to go shiny. So I'll see you in a minute. And a lot of people have asked, how do you clean the gun out? How simple is it? No chemicals, no nothing. All you do, you just hold the bottle upside down, empty the bottle out back into the container because you'll get some dust collecting in there. And I normally do that in front of the ventilation fan. And I don't know whether you can see that or not, but it's just dropping back in there out of the gun. I'm pulling the trigger while I'm doing that. Right, that can have the lid back on it. So finish with that, that goes back in the drawer. I've turned the compressor up now, back to full power. It was at five PSI, between five and eight PSI when I was squirting this. So I just put that gun back on there at full pressure. Right, so that's back on there. And what I do now is I just put my hand over the top and squirt it, little pulses, till you just stop seeing the powder come out. But once I've done that, I'll take that off. I'll get my air blower, put that on there, and any residual powder that is around the outside of the gun, blow that off first, 
and then I'll pull the trigger and blow it down the chamber. And you'll get some more jet out of there. So that's it. Come in the other side, round the nozzle. That's it. That's the gun cleaned, it's that simple. Put it back in storage. I'll finish off by clearing the area. I open up the case. You can buy this kit without the case. It's a little bit cheaper, but I just find it handy. All these I do hand tie up. I don't even tighten them up fully. So I undo my little connector off of my water trap. And all I will say is you're, you're operating at such low air pressure, I've never had any drop of water at all in that water trap. That just unscrews off of there. Plug that back in your case. There's the gun. Clean and ready for the next time. You ain't got to do any more than that. So whack that back in the case, boof, close, job done. I just find having all this so handy in these little drawers. I've got loads of powders here, which I still haven't used yet, which I want to be trying out. There's all my bottles of powder in the drawers, different candies in that drawer. There's all the satins and whatever, and titaniums, black gloss in there. There's more colors in there, obviously pinks, blues, NATO greens and stuff like that, so more greens there. I've got all my little um, plugs which you use for blocking up hole, threaded holes and stuff like that. I've got the heat sensitive tape there, so that's in another drawer. I've got some wire hangers down there for making the, hanging the stuff up from me uh, spraying rail, so to speak. And I've got some extra clear bottles, which I've got to put some of these colours back into. I keep meaning to do that, but uh, yeah, nice little workstation that now. And it's easily movable about the workshop, which is handy. So I will be setting all this out properly very, very soon. Once we've got this new workshop built out the back there, this will all be sorted out. So it's all a matter of time, one thing at a time. Right, let's have a little look inside here. As you can see, it's started to go shiny already. So I'm looking at my watch now and I'm gonna allow 10 minutes. So at 10 past, I'm gonna pull it out. It doesn't matter too much if you leave your part in longer than the 10 minutes because it won't hurt it whatsoever. It won't hurt the powders. I've actually, although these cure at 180 degrees centigrade, I've actually had one in the oven and it's been up to 250 degrees centigrade and everything was still fine. So there is a bit of tolerance there. So don't be too hung up on the 180 degrees. The main thing is, is that these little ovens, they heat up so quickly. And if you've got little parts to do like little brackets and stuff like that, one of these is only about 95 quid, one of these ovens. And the, the kit itself is about 150 pounds, something like that. You could be powder coating in no time if you've got a little compressor and you don't need a big compressor. A little 25 litre one will do. And again, you can pick them up new or second hand, just have a look on Facebook or whatever. Right, let's have a little look in here. Right, I'm gonna give that a bit longer because my time is only working in five minutes, as I just told you. So I'm gonna have to turn it off, turn it on and press. See, my, my ultrasonic cleaners playing up. It's probably about time I've got a new one. So, another thing for the list. Right, let's leave that for a bit. Right, that's it, we've been in there now for 10 minutes at 180 degrees C. Let me just show you what the temperature is. All right, there we go. We're at 188 actually, so we're a little bit over, but uh, I'm not too worried about that. So let's get this bit out. All right, okay, gotta be careful here, because I did mark it before, didn't I? Right, now, if I just turn it around here, you don't know whether you can see or not, but you probably can't see it very well, but where I actually marked it on that corner, it's totally blended in again, look. Absolutely fantastic. And that looks like a, a brand new part. So I'll hang that up over here and let that cool off. And uh, yeah, that looks like a brand new part. So let me put that out there. Yeah, as I say, once I put the card back on, there's no reason why we can't give this a, a little start. Well, well, I don't know where we're going to start it, I don't know. So as I'm coming along, I'm finding bits that uh, need refurbishing, as I said to you. I've not looked any further because I've got so much work to do upstairs, as you've probably seen with the uh, installation work upstairs, and that's what's taking me preference at the moment. So videos might be a little bit, a bit spasmodic at the moment, but uh, that's because I've got that other work going on. Right, the Versa tray, let's go next door. So if you would like to win one of these, I've got five to give away. All you've got to do is in the comment section, this is unfortunately only for the UK people in the UK mainland because of the shipping cost that would uh, cost me to ship these all over the globe. So I've only got five. So what you have to do is in the comment section below, just write the word Versi Tray, V-E-R-S-I 
T-R-A-Y, and hit the like button on this video. That's all you've got to do. And next week, next weekend, on um, my next, um, might not be, if, if I put a video out midweek, I'm not too sure, but it'll be next weekend, either a Saturday or a Sunday. I'll do a live draw with a, a, a number generator, and I'll give you, all of you that are entered in the UK, I'll give you all a, a number, and then we'll do a number generator and pull your name out. So I've got five to give away, so that's coming up next weekend. Right, that's that. Let's have a little look at this. I'm gonna give that a full half hour, as I did mention to you, but you can see from the inside of that already how clean that is inside. Now look, there was, although there wasn't really much in there, but the, the metal is uh, showing you how clean it is inside there. Right, so I'll leave that on there now. I'm gonna to have to look up for another one of these because as I say, this one's playing up. I've had it a good few years now, so. Uh, yeah, look, temperamental. There you go. Right, let's leave that to do its thing. Right, that's good enough. I'll leave it at that, I think. Let's get the basket out. And don't forget this carb's gonna be hot. So let's put that on there for the moment. Right, okay, so there's my carb out. I want to put the goggles on because I'm just going to give it a quick blow down. I like to blow them down afterwards with an airline just to. So I've blown in every orifice there. So I'm no guaranteed that that's clean. So I'm happy with that. Do the same with the base. Right, so that's that. Me little jets and stuff. I could tip straight into one of them little trainers, even with that little bit of fluid there, I'm not worried about that. And I'll also blow these out as well. Me emulsion tube as well. These little holes are very imperative that they're clean. And again, just hold them up through the light and you should be able to see all the way through them. If in doubt, rod out, rod them out. <laughs> Me main jet. Yeah, that's clean. And also clear all the way through. And as I say, if these jets are blocked, you have got little carburetor cleaning things which you can clean them out with. That will also have a number on that, so I will make a note of the number in case I have to upgrade or downgrade the jet. Right, that's it. So I'm just going to take a little bit of time, put this car back together. You haven't really got to see that. It is all clean, as you can see. I'll just show you how, how neat and tidy it is inside now. Oh, everything's been blown out, and that's ready to be assembled. So I'm going to do that now. There we go. We've got the kickstart back on, and we've also got the car back on, been rebuilt, all ready to go back in the engine. Right, I'm going to leave this video here. Don't forget to uh, put Versa Tray if you're interested in one of the Versa Trays. I've got five to give away for free. And uh, just leave that in the comment section, but that's only for the UK people only, I'm afraid. So there you go. If you like my videos, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down there. Ring that little notification bell down there. Set your preferences to all. That way you'll get notified every time I upload a video. Thanks very much, and I'll see you in the next video. And until then, bye for now.